In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our text for our message is found in 1 John chapter 4. It's printed in your worship folder and also printed up there on the screen. Why don't we read our text together? Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. As I said at the beginning of the service, this is a bold claim. God is love. And that's what I'd like to address in our message. As uh, some of you are aware, I come from a family of uh, six, and I have two brothers. One of my brothers is a pastor. He's pastor at Holy Cross here in Fort Wayne. The other brother, who happens to be a member here at St. Peter's, Brother Dave, has worked for many years as a patent attorney. Now, I have to admit to you, I I always thought that patent work would be a tedious, mind-boggling, dare I say, boring occupation. I mean, have you ever read a patent application before? I mean, why could he have not been a, a prosecutor or a litigator, but a patent attorney? One of those patent applications, they can be excruciatingly painful to read, let alone to to write one. In fact, I'd like to give you an example of one here today. A purpose of my invention is to provide a helical spring toy which will transfer its turns from one end to the other in an entertaining manner when it is bent into general semicircular form and the ends are moved up and down. It goes on to say, a further purpose is to provide a helical spring toy which will walk on an amusement platform such as an inclined plane or set of steps from a starting point to successive lower landing points without application of external force beyond the starting force and the action of gravity. It goes on. A further purpose is to design a helical spring toy of essentially low natural frequency, suitably between 10 and 100 cycles per minute, having substantially no compression between turns in closed position when no external force is acting, and having dimensions and proportions which permit manual handling. And friends, on and on this description goes for six more pages. Not six more slides, mind you, but six single space typed pages. I'll spare you the pain here this morning of having to hear the whole description that includes every detailed specification you can possibly imagine. By the way, though, from what I've shared so far, can you guess what this patent description is actually attempting to describe for us? Yeah, you can be patent attorneys. It's a slinky. (laughs) Now, to the average layperson, and certainly to a little child, all that technical, descriptive talk, why, it can be overwhelming. In the midst of it all, we want so badly to shout out, why don't you just call it a slinky? Well, you know, I have found the same to be true when theologians talk, when they talk to us about God. Today, uh, the day we observe what is called Trinity Sunday, why, that's a classic example of that very fact. As you know, this is that time of year when we dust off that, that lengthy, that complex, that tedious old document called the Athanasian Creed. 
Thank goodness, we think to ourselves, this only comes around once a year, right? If we can just get through this weekend's annual observance of the Holy Trinity, why then we can get back to the rest of the year where we can learn about the God of love, right? I mean, after all, that's what we really want to know, is it not? That God truly loves us. For without his love, we'd be lost. We would be without hope. Without his love, nothing else really matters. So my friends, the temptation is to ignore all this this stodgy, this esoteric talk about the triune God here today, who after all really needs that, and get back to that old-time religion of proclaiming the simple yet profound message of a loving God. The problem, however, is with that approach, as tempting as it may be, if truth be told, the doctrine of the Trinity really is that old-time religion that we so much long for. As the doctrine of the Trinity accurately reflects the God of the Bible, the God whom we worship, as he truly is from all eternity. Furthermore, without the Holy Trinity, without that doctrine, my friends, there really would be no such thing as a loving God. That's right. Without the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, there would be no such thing as a loving God. Let me explain this. First of all, not all gods are the same. That, by the way, is a very popular misconception, a misconception that our world around us has certainly bought into, but one that many Christians of our own time seem to have bought into as well. But the fact of the matter is, not all gods are the same. Take the God of the Islamic faith, for example, whom they refer to as Allah. Allah is one God, one person. As opposed to the God of the Holy Scriptures, who has revealed himself to us, yes, as one God, yet three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. According to the Quran, which is, as you probably know, the holy book of the Islamic faith, it states that, quote, in no sense does Allah beget, nor is he begotten. In other words, Allah is what we might call a single person God. And that, my friends, is completely, completely different a completely different sort of deity than that of the God of the Bible, who again is, yes, one God, yet three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that then leads us to another issue, indeed a, a more challenging issue. And that is, if, if God were just one person, he could not be intrinsically loving. Since for all eternity, before creation, he would have had nobody to love, right? Now what I just said there for you is really not as deep as it may have sounded. So let's not let it slip past us. Simply stated, God could not be love if there were nobody to love. And creating people, us human beings, so that we uh, might somehow be the objects of his love, so that he could be love, that doesn't solve the problem either. Because you see, if he had to create us human beings so that he might become a loving God, then think about this. That would mean he would be dependent upon us in order to be who he is. 
And if He created us in order to be who He is, then we humans would be required in order for God to exist. But of course, it doesn't work that way, does it? No, God does not need us humans in order to exist. God is not dependent upon us or anything. Rather, we are dependent upon Him. Just as we do not give life to God, rather, He gives life to us. Perhaps the the best way to understand what I'm trying to explain to you here this morning is for us to ask that question, what was God doing before creation? Huh? What was he doing before creation? Now, some might say that we should not be asking such questions like that. After all, how should we know what God was doing? Well, interestingly, Jesus actually answers that question. In John chapter 17, verse 24, where he says, Father, you loved me before the creation of the world. Friends, do you see what's taking place here? What's going on? Before he ever created, before he ever ruled the world, the universe, before anything else, the God of the Bible was a father loving his son. You see, that's who God is. That's his most basic identity, the father of the eternal son. Yes, he is the father from eternity, loving his son. That's why it can be rightly said that God is love. It's not that he is simply capable of love, nor is he the highest, the the most supreme example of love. No, he is the very essence of love. He is love because that has been his very nature from all eternity. Now, hopefully that insight uh, helps you to better understand why this doctrine of the Holy Trinity is so important. As it says to us in the Athanasian Creed, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. Because you see, the only God who can truly love you and thereby save you is the triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All other so-called gods, whatever names they may happen to go by, cannot truly save because they are not at their very core truly loving like the God of Holy Scriptures. Yes, only the triune God, only the three-in-one God, can it be rightfully said, is love. Now, so far, I've only talked about that loving relationship between the Father and the Son. But you might be thinking, well, what about the Holy Spirit? Why a third person of the Holy Trinity? Well, think of it this way. If God were only two persons, Father and Son, then he might be loving, but in an excluding, in an ungenerous way, perhaps. After all, when two persons love each other, they can be so taken, have you ever noticed with each other, that they simply ignore everyone else. And let's face it, a God like that would not be good news for us. But when the love between two persons is happy and healthy and secure, Why, they rejoice to share it. Well, that's how it is with the triune God whom we worship, whom Scripture confesses. Being perfectly loving from all eternity, the Father and Son have delighted to share their love and joy with and through the Holy Spirit. And by the way, Just as the love existed for all eternity between the Father and the Son, so also the sharing of that love with and through the Holy Spirit has also existed for all eternity. 
That's why it says, as it does there in the Athanasian Creed, the Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet they are not three eternals, but one eternal. The truth is, God has been and is and will always be a sharing God. That is a God who desires to include and create and, and then spread His love. As a matter of fact, my friends, each of us here this morning have experienced that, that sharing of God's love in our own lives as He chose to include us in His kingdom. Even though we did not deserve to be included on account of our own sinfulness, out of His love, though, spilling out like a fountain, if you will, He created in us faith. Faith in His Son, Jesus Christ, who took away our sin by His death upon the cross and opened to us the kingdom of God by His resurrection from the dead. And now the Holy Spirit of God continues to work in and through each of us so that we can continue to know and to grow in His love. And not only to know and grow in that love for ourselves, but also to share it, to spread it around that others may know and grow in it as well. You know, speaking of that, growing, sharing, spreading the love of God, you know, this ministry here at St. Peter's would be severely hindered in that very task if it were not for the commitment and the dedication of literally hundreds of volunteers that put to use their God-given time and talents here in this place. Not to mention the time and talents that our members put to use outside of the church and school walls in a, in a variety of other ministry-related activities in our community. As I mentioned earlier, whereas our triune God is not in any way dependent upon us for anything, since He is, after all, fully sufficient in all things and in all ways, nevertheless, He has chosen to incorporate us into the work of spreading His love so that we might also share in the joy of His love. Dear friends, it is true. It is a whole lot easier to just call this thing a slinky rather than describe it with a lot of what seems to be mumble-jumble. Just as it is a whole lot easier to just call God, God. Rather than describe Him with all those complicated words and difficult phrases like we ran into with this Athanasian Creed. Admittedly, this God talk can be rather difficult to take in and, and process when you consider the fact that really trying to understand the holy, almighty, infinite God with our sinful, weak, finite minds can be, well, it can be like trying to, to empty all the water of the ocean with nothing more than just one of those plastic kids' buckets. Thankfully, the God way up there, far beyond our understanding and comprehension, chose to come down here on our level in the person of the Son, Jesus Christ, so that we could experience His love in a real, tangible way. For as Holy Scripture says, greater love has no one than this that he laid down his life for his friends. And dear friends, as we gaze upon the cross of Christ, we are able to see and we are able to understand that the God of Scripture, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is love. Praise him for that. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.